Thank you for introduction. I hope you hear me. Welcome to the presentation developers to QEs of themselves. It will be mainly targeted for upstream developers who don't have any QEs and would like to deliver stable releases with minimal effort. Uh, we will explain how the continuous integration look like for DNF package manager. During the presentation, do not hesitate to uh, ask about anything. If you have any questions, please just raise your hand. Uh, or if you are shy, you can ask uh, something afterwards uh, to DNF team. There's Jarda Mráček and Michal Luščoň. Uh, this talk will be split into two parts. The first part will be covered by me and is about uh, how the whole process of the testing workflow looks like and which technologies we have used and why. The last part will be about integration testing, which is the sub part of the whole process. Uh, at first, I would like to ask you or do some research. Please raise your hand, everybody who is developing some upstream project. Perfect, it's about half of the people. So I'm right at a developer conference. And the next question, who of you who are developers have continuous integration tool integrated to your project? That's about one third of the developers. So that's enough. So those of you who already have some continuous integration tool, you can mm, learn about new concepts and tools which we use. Uh, and those of you who don't have continuous integration already, you can adapt our tool. OK, and the last question, who ever released the broken application to the customers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about the same amount that has continuous integration tool. But I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, we already did that, and it's kind of sad that it happens to package manager that should up update your system. How can you upgrade a package manager to the new release if you can't upgrade at all? So that's the motivation to prevent broken releases. Uh, when you have more contributors to your project, uh, you spend more time to testing these uh, pull requests, but you can rather spend the time on developing cool features of your application itself. So invest on automated <laughs> tasks. At this slide, we can see the whole process. Uh, everything begins when someone, some contributor, do pull request at GitHub, or anybody pushes a new commit to the upstream. There, the package build is triggered. Uh, while we are building uh, RPM package inside our continuous integration, is the reason is that then we are sure that we can do another release immediately and that the package build pass. As a side product of this build, we get the unit test checked. And once we have the RPM packages, we can put it into our integration test system. Uh, this is uh, this examined by black box testing the whole application. The last uh, of the test is static code checker that checks for some redundancies or some violations of the code so you can persist the maintainable code. If this process happened by pushing some new patch to the upstream. We also store that RPM packages and serve them to the users as nightly builds. In this slide, uh, there's described the whole technologies we used. Uh, the, core the core component is Jenkins. Uh, that actually is continuous integration tool that automates the task. Uh, we have uh, our projects from DNF ecosystem on GitHub, 
and five of them are integrated into continuous integration tool. So everything uh, is new uh, pull request triggered. It runs the Jenkins job and recursively, uh, recursively uh, rebuilds the other packages. Uh, with regard to package build, we are using uh, Tito definition. That's the tool that automates the releases. With that, you can, by one single same command line, uh, build the RPM packages of any of these projects. You have to just have uh, one folder inside each of the project. I forget to mention that we use a Jenkins GitHub pull request builder plugin. Uh, you need to have this to have your pull request checked. Jenkins has many of these plugins. And unlike, for example, Travis CI, uh, Jenkins is not a service. Uh, you need to host it somewhere on some server. And we use OpenStack for that. Okay, let's move to the lower part, uh, which is dedicated to the testing. We run Python unit test with some mocking but we realized we need also some integration tests. And for that, we are using Docker technology to have isolable, reproducible environment. For static code analysis, we are using Web8 and PyFlex, which can find any violations against Web8 standard in Python, and PyFlex can find some redundancies of the code or some coding that leads to error-prone code base. So that's for the technologies we have used. I would like you to take two ideas from this presentation. Do not neglect testing and invest your time in manually tasks that you do repeatedly and invest time to automate this task. It will pay off in the future. You can reuse uh, our whole DNF testing framework for your own project. There will be a link at the end of the slides. Now, I would like to invite Jaroslav Mraček, who is the creator of DNF integration test. Hi everyone, thank you Honza for interacting me. And uh, I would like to, I have a great pleasure to present here something about functional testing. Well, in general, just if you think about the uh, testing of your project, I think you start to think about, you know, to test each commit separately. After when you merge it, uh, try to test uh, each uh, nightly build or to make a test uh, before you make a release. But just think about, is this really the, all what you want to do? Probably you can just have a dream that you can ask contributors, you know, to pass all the tests before they make a pull request. That will be really dream, what we can dream all about. But. <laughs> If you want to wish to have a dream that will become true, somehow you have to pay for it. You have to offer them. You have to offer them something what they will say, okay, I mean not offer like that they cannot refuse, but uh, offer that they will accept because they want. Yeah, therefore you have to start to think what they will like. You like that they will make a locally test. Okay, okay, they probably like that they will have uh, local builds. Well, automatic local builds. Uh, but at a certain time, yeah, you think, okay, probably they will like to have a testing environment that will not interfere with their own system. Well, 
I will try to cover in my talk both sides. The first, I will just repeat what's going in our workflow by a little bit different way. Okay, when the pull request appear on our server, our server where run Jenkins, it start, it uh, triggered the job where it downloads uh, packages after it makes a source RPM build, it's sent to the copper, copper run the, all the tests and after that you have RPMs and after when the RPMs are ready on the copper server, okay, the our functional tests uh, start and then it reports back to the to the Jenkins and the Jenkins to the to the GitHub. Yeah, that's the, the whole magic. Well, our functional tests uh, are based on the three, let's say, technologies. Yeah, Docker we use as a testing environment. I think you heard quite a lot during this uh, conference about the Docker. We try to describe our test in behave, and al also we use the Apache uh, HTTP server to emulate the web uh, repository inside the Docker image. You know, we try to do as much as possible to just uh, emulate the normal environment in our testing uh, procedure. Well, uh, our DDT test, I found that, uh, well, it's become pretty famous. Yeah, the, in the newspaper I found that, okay, they found the D, uh, DDT already at the Antarctic coast. Yeah, that's amazing, I think. If we start to think about the Docker, yeah, mostly the, uh, you heard the, the motto, which is uh, build, ship, and run an application anywhere. That means that, okay, you built some working application, you distribute it, and that's all the job. Our approach with the Docker is a little bit different. We tried to, do, sorry, we tried to uh, build a Docker image every time when the t uh, task is triggered. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Well, that's a little bit uh, different approach how to how to handle the, the Docker. Most of you, or some of you, already heard about the behave. Again, we choose it to we choose to describe the uh, testing environment. Yeah, because the behave use something cloud. They say that it use uh, test written in the na a natural language style backed by Python code. It has an advantage that uh, not only developers will understand the test procedure. Like, yeah, when, when we read that this is the part of our test, yeah, where is written, when I execute bash command dnf uh, minus y install test a with the success, then the package test a test b should be installed and the package test c should be absent. I think it's quite understandable, yeah? It doesn't make uh, much, yeah? It recognizes what to do, which, uh, variable has to be used, and that's just, it's executed, and uh, you will then see the, the result. If we come to the, our functional test, what it does, yeah? The DNF, you know, it's uh, from the command line, it's used uh, by the user from command line interface. Therefore, our test procedure is also used the same way. Therefore, it shoot the command to the command line and we try to uh, analyze what happened then. The test is run, we can say, in the three parts. The first part is the preparation. That mostly means the building of the, build of the Docker image. That means the installed or required component, upgrade components, and of course, install the tested version of uh, uh, of the component which we run the test. And all of these tests has to be ensured it's done properly. 
For further building, uh, for the build, uh, Docker used the something which is called a Docker file. Just uh, it starts that okay. It tells you from which image to start, what to run. You can copy it inside the directory or to add some file, and you can describe what to do when you enter the, the container. This is not only way how to build the image. Yeah, you can also uh, commit the container as an image and later, later on use it like this. Yeah. Sometimes it's necessary because not all steps can be done during the um, uh, Docker, uh, Docker image build. Yeah. For example, our unit tests uh, requires uh, TTY. And uh, well, during the uh, Docker build, you cannot use it, but you can use it during the Docker run. Therefore, you make a Docker run of your unfin uh, unfinished build of, of the image, and after when it's correctly finished, you just commit as a, as a new image. <coughs> In the second part, this take place the, uh, the run of our tests. Therefore, the old test description are inside the, uh, inside the container, and we just say, okay, run this test with the Python 2 or Python 3 uh, DNF version. Yeah? Well, after when the old test passed, we came to the, to the third part where, okay, you want to have a all summary of the old test, what what's was okay, what was wrong, and of course, this is quite important part, yeah? You have to clean all images, all containers, because you can be quite surprised how easily your uh, disk or system disk will be depleted by the running of such a test. Now we come to the second part. How to use our tool as for the local build? Okay, you want to run it locally. Therefore, okay, well, don't use a copper. Therefore, we just make a, a directly build of RPM. We did it into container. Therefore, inside this container is installed all requirements. Yeah, and uh, when this is finished, we can start with uh, functional tests. This procedure has uh, some advantages. For example. What will be on the server side a little bit more difficult for the Jenkins? Yeah, it could be done easily and locally. Like you have uh, uh, two components, like in our case, we have a plugin score and DNF, and you make a changes in both projects, and they are tied together. Therefore, you want to make a test of both projects in one container, and this can be done uh, locally. Therefore, you first built inside the first uh, project, install, and the second project, which requires the, the first one. Therefore, you have, after that, the um, test, which can really could uh, work with the several, several projects at one time. And uh, there is another option that you can keep the image at the end. Therefore, you can easily enter this uh, Docker image or run the container as a testing environment. You can see how if your changes really does what you want to do and doesn't make a, any mess. Yeah, and that's what we can offer our contributors. Yeah, the testing environment inside the Docker. If some mess happen, yeah, it doesn't interact with your host machine. Yeah, it's inside the Docker. If you do anything wrong, you just delete the container, and that's all. Yeah, you have uh, you can forget about the cleaning the and maintaining the the container. Yeah, you just delete it. Yeah, that's all. <coughs> uh, at this place, yeah, you can find our uh, project which we use for the continuous integration test, and. Well, we came to the, to the end of my talk, and I just want to ask you, yeah, please think about our philosophy, philosophy of the testing. Yeah? Please think about functional tests. Please use our work, use our code, because 
you know, believe in open source world. Thank you very much. Okay, if there's some question, Honza, come. <laughs> ah, yes. So if I want to run this test suite, what are the requirements that I have to, you know, what do I need to have on my system? Is it just Docker or something else? Yes. Just yeah, oh, well, well, yeah, that's the plan. No, no, Titer is installed inside the Docker. It used to be like this. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, on the server side, uh, there is the one part. Uh, well, you send it to the copper. Yeah, that's. Yes. What? Well, it could take uh, five minutes. It could take uh, hours. That's depend uh, how how it's uh, you know. Oh uh, well, uh, together it take fifteen minutes. But, oh no. Well, you know, this is server somewhere else, and uh, is it project, or? no, no, no. The the copper is the the. Accept uh, this is the service which which you call outside, yeah. and uh, okay they have uh, different uh, let's say, uh, yeah some, sometimes the build is shorter sometimes it's uh, so the longer. Not no, ah. no you you don't control it, but okay uh, if you, uh, we start to think about uh, the local build you can switch if you don't like the copper to the build always inside your. Uh, your Docker image, yeah. Yeah, that's actually the component I forget to mention or explain. Uh, inside into Copper, you put just source package, and it would build the binary packages for uh, some federal distributions and just architecture. All right, and then it will run some kind of init set. Yes. <laughs> uh, do you create a new test so when it's after somebody uh, reports new bug to cover that problem? Sure, I think that's uh, the the normal procedure. That uh, okay, if you. So our uh, set of uh, tests is still. Yes, the for example, now I I prepared the test for Insta root. At least uh, the the behavior in Insta root uh, was changed. Therefore, I try to you know to or to, to check, or it's checked, yeah, but to describe the test that we do it is next time automatically. And, uh, you said uh, that you don't have any QE, so, you, so uh, many of your work, how much time do you spend on creating the test, or you don't have many bugs? Well. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. 
Because I think for the elite is doing for creating new tests. Yeah. Yeah, that it's called QE by, by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think uh, you doesn't need to to cover by the test uh, the all of the bugs and so on. Yeah, I think uh, the the main uh, uh, you doesn't need to test uh, all possibilities combination of the of the commands options and so on. Yeah, it it will be fine, but it, it's not necessary. It's good if you cover the the most. Uh, Used user cases, the first option. The second one, the combination of the option uh, options, uh, like that they are in general handled correctly. Yeah, I think this is, there is nearly no test that will really test all of the feature. Yeah, but of, co of course, uh, I think the future will be that. Uh, uh, you uh, you could create by the pull request also, also the test procedure that will that will uh, lay on uh, that will describe no not describe but that will prove that your uh, your commit do what do you really want to do. So you require co committers uh, to also uh, create new tests for. The I think features. that would be nice, but uh, we will see what uh, how so this will work. <laughs> Especially from you. <laughs> no, no, sorry, I'm joking. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Okay, let's distribute. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Who asked? The bush? Who asked else? <laughs>
vôbec nemáme. Ešte sú tam tri, ale ako máme ešte x prednášu. No, tak poďme zobrať, podľa mňa to ich miesto. No? Je to možné, no? Je to... Však máme teraz čas. Jo, jo. Ešte. Hej. Možno to. Ještě tu vaši prezentaci na tohle To nevím, jako... Je právě to. Honzi počítač. Jste ten list? Jo, už Dobré, už je tam máme. Že ještě dělá to. Spítrům dává si spát samo Dostali jste samo lepší? Dala vám? Já jsem se nebyl. Kále jsem zase dvě děte. Jsi můj šouchu? Má nejmladší jako ještě na lepky, to je přes rok. Máme ještě, máme ještě nějaké samolepky u chodu už a teď. Ne, a co tam máte, ale ty továčky jsou tam. Co jsou tam? Ty továčky. Ty, 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 ty už mají, to už jsem vzal několik, už, už, už večer se fotili, jo. Já se musím ještě vyvětovat, to toho už je doma. Na druhou stranu nejsou úplně snadno sezávatelné. To nevadí, to může být náš. To je Honzu Tmogu? Tohle, tohle je Honzu Tmogu? No, Honzo, co jsi jel do včera? Jsi šel do Vrdického zoo, takže jsem se mu se slovo. Hej, hej, super. A ten mu to zjel asi... Á, takže ho ti zabavujeme. A on se mu tuší musí. Barf, huš, pojď, pojď. Já, 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 Uh, jako si jsi to nakopíroval? Ano, nakopíroval jsem to sem. Aha, jo, jo, jo. Jo, díky. Hlavně nám čali do něco, Super, super. No a čo ty? Najprv, vlastně ty se přihlásil na... na, na jako se šel, že? Bez toho, aby si věděl, co je to. Ale to je super, to je super, jako že vím, že máš taky, taky od ducha. Že rada pomáhá, že si ho tak ještě.
test a ja som to pánu, že som robil od druhej, tretej, čtvrtej ráno, tak som ostal opisný, ako som používal ten je to 2400, ktorý by som to zaujíval. One, two, one, two. Okay.